Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story, lost ours discussions, fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast, that podcast that gives a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we're going to have a fireside chat with the crew. We got a couple missing, but that's okay. We can hold down the fort until they uh, show up on the next one. Um, so for, uh, all the listeners out there, if, uh, you're interested, go to our website. That's, uh, the lost art.podbean.com. You can go there. Uh, if you want to help us out, you can buy merchandise. Uh, there's a place you can donate money. If you want to do that, anything that you can do, uh, will help us in the future as we, uh, try to get our veteran voices out for all to hear. Uh, and also if you want to be a guest on the podcast and email me directly at the lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. Um, and with that, I got my crew here. I'm going to start uh, round robin the way they came in. Krista, how are you doing? Good. I had a great week. Got my taxes filed late. Don't owe too much. And life is good. It's nice and warm here in Beaufort. Nice. Okay. I like it. I like it. Aaron, how about you? I uh, got my taxes done. I didn't owe anything. Thank goodness. Um but yeah, watched a lot of baseball on Saturday. Uh, started some some stuff, honeydew stuff around the house. Uh, and of course, you know my attention doesn't keep on one thing, so I ended up doing about four or five other things. Uh, <laughs> and I received Krista's package. She sent me a bunch of little uh, baseball ornaments. I like those. I'm, I think I'm gonna put up a tree in my office with baseball themed stuff. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Baseball stuff. Yeah. You are definitely uh, the baseball uh, uh, fan out of all of us for sure. Uh, although I do enjoy watching the games, uh, but I'm not quite as into it as you are. I will tell you that. Uh, Vic, how you doing? Good. Life is good. We had uh, some uh, a landscape crew come in and tear out all the bushes in our yard uh and, and just like they were giant monstrosities they were just an eyesore so we got rid of that they put in like uh paper borders around our flower beds and a few other things so uh the, the yard's looking a lot better now so uh everybody's happy a happy spouse happy house all that kind of stuff you know <laughs> Very so, good. Uh, yeah and then uh that's a nice dinner tonight some uh some steaks and potatoes good old american dinner tonight it was good wow yeah i'm jealous I'm very jealous. I'm sitting in my car right now wishing I had something to eat. That's okay, though. Uh, <laughs> in your car? <laughs> I had to go get some Wi-Fi signal. No, I had to use my phone. Uh, my Wi-Fi signal on Fort Story doesn't work very good, so I just had to go venture out and find a spot that uh, actually works well. Hopefully, it's coming through uh, better than it has. So, um, I don't know. You guys tell me. Is it any better? Uh, so far, so good. All right. Well, hey, I'm doing good then. Uh, yep. So we do have a uh, a birthday coming up, uh, or uh, it hasn't already happened though, right? It's coming up. Uh, he should get <laughs> two thumbs up for it. Go ahead, Vic. Yeah. yeah oh. I, oh, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, Vic is uh, turning. I think it's sixty five. Isn't that right, Vic? Sixty four. Yes. yes. Sixty four. Yes. Sixty four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, seriously, what are you turning? Uh, 51. 51. Man, okay. All right. Uh, and then Aaron, you're like, what, 30 years younger than he is? Isn't that right? He gave a thumbs up. <laughs> well, if I could hit the mute button. Yeah, I, I would I would say about 30 years younger. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> yeah, I'm 28. No, uh, <laughs> you said 50. 51. I'll, I'll be 44 this year. So what? Seven. I can't do math in public, but sounds like seven years, give or take. We'll, we'll go with seven ish. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds good. 30th yeah. anniversary of my 21st birthday. Ooh, I like it. Does that mean that, you that, didn't, you that get, sounds a lot better. 
<laughs> you, you get to uh, indulge times three. So oh yeah, said? totally. And I did uh, last okay. night. I, I definitely oh, did. did. Okay. Yeah. It's good to hear. Especially. Uh, oh, oh. Ooh. Maybe maybe uh, when the conversation gets going, uh, I'll go get uh, some uh, libation that was graciously given to me. A little uh, bottle of uh, Traveler's Bourbon. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, right. I'm looking forward to that. That's t- that's going to be some. T- I think I'm going to go do it like real soon. All right. Well, uh, have an extra for me when you do so. Uh, I'll just have to wait till I get home. And uh, he exited very quickly to go uh, do that. So while uh, Vic is gone, uh, Chris, Aaron, I, I really, uh, I didn't have an agenda for tonight, and I, I was just wondering, do you guys have anything specific that you want to bring up or talk about? Nope. All right. So, well, I know, I know in the, in our chat or uh, text group text, uh, Krista brought up the, the little clip of Jordan Peterson. Um, you know, a little quote or not a quote, but a, I guess it'd be an excerpt from one of his uh, many uh, great talks or discussions uh, where it talked about. Um, I can't even remember the details now, but. It was like a aggressive, uh, aggressive man. You want aggressive men, uh, right? But, but aggressive men that can uh, control themselves or something like that. I can't remember the exact word. Yeah, basically, an aggressive males that are that are basically in control of themselves and their surroundings, and, and you know can control their actions and reactions. I guess you could say. In order to keep uh, away the psychopaths, yeah. The crazy in order guy. to keep good. the psychopaths away, absolutely. Yeah, that uh, reminds me of uh, the whole thing with the sheep, the wolf, and the wolf dog is what that reminds me of uh, when I heard it. Um, but uh, you know what I'm talking about, Krista? No, please share that. So uh, uh, I, it was I was a long time ago, but it was in a book, uh, and uh, he explained it. So the sheep is like the uh, – he used the American people. So the sheep is like the American people. And uh, a sheepdog is like your military, right? They are there to protect and defend and do those types of things for the sheep. Uh, but they look an awful lot like a wolf, right? So the uh, the sheep are scared of uh, that in the sheepdog, you know, but when the wolf actually comes around, they all hide behind that sheepdog. Uh, but the second the wolf is gone, then they, you know, they try to uh, not do away with, but push away the uh, the sheepdog because they're kind of scared of him too. So he has fangs, he has all everything all the same. It's just that's the sheepdog. So the sheepdog being the, the military and then, of course, the uh, the wolf being our enemy um, is, is the like that he put it in. But that's kind of what it reminded me of. Right. And we talked about that being with the Marines that, you know, that you put them out, you know, at night when no one's around, but then you put them out back when company comes kind of mentality. So, no, um, since you guys don't mind talking about it, I can definitely um, touch on it lightly a little bit. What happened yeah. um, since then we don't have our other company here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um, let me just kind of gather my thoughts here for a second and tell you what happened. Um, basically, uh, Mike had brought up that reel. Um, and my take on it is, is that I'm very, um, just being a, a woman and I know I'm supposed to be a little bit stronger sometimes than I'm a Marine, but I'm older, I'm almost 60 and, um, and I've got some disabilities. And so that makes me a little bit weaker sometimes. And also, you know, physiologically, um, is the, is the weaker sex as you call it. And I'm definitely proud that I'm a sex of a female <laughs> and that, um, and I do need protection sometimes. Um, what happened was, um, as I think I've shared with you guys on here a few times, um, a few years ago, I fell off a ladder and I had eight seizures in six days. And then I was unable to drive a car for eight months. And um, the first time I drove, um, I drove up to the local laundromat. And um, and then also at that time, um, when I was younger, I was an amateur bodybuilder and power lifter, bench presser and a water ski jumper. So I had torn both of my biceps and had frozen shoulders and had had some um, surgery and I couldn't lift one of my arms, my right arm above, like just above my waist. I couldn't lift it high. So all this said, um, I'd gone to the local laundromat and um, couldn't lift some, th- couldn't lift my right arm. And I hadn't driven a car for a long time and, you know, facing the, the issues with, um, <clears throat> having epilepsy, being diagnosed with as epileptic. And um, so I'm in the laundromat and I have these 
um, down here in the low country, we have what's called shrimp baskets. <laughs> These those big plastic round shrimp baskets, you know, that are heavy duty. And I use those for laundry baskets. And I've been in there doing some laundry. And when I got ready to leave, there was a gentleman in there and he offered to um, take them out. And I told him, no, I was fine. But he grabbed one up. And I had an old Chevy Uplander van and um, and I didn't want to pay the $165 for a new key fob. And so I'm still old fashioned. The key works to open the door. And um, <clears throat> I'd broken my rule that day and take it in a purse instead of just my roll of quarters and my um, laundry soap. And he grabbed up one of the baskets. I had the other one and I came out and um, I had to unlock the door in order to unlock the back and lift the lid or the, um, the back hatchback of the van open. And um, so I unlock the car and then I walk around to the back and lift up the thing and it's really heavy. And he um, helps me put the thing in and I just tell him, I've got it, I've got it. And you know, he won't listen to me. And um, and he asked me then, can I have a dollar? And that's how the local laundromats are around here. We're in the low country. And I reach in to get him a, I was gonna give him a $5 bill cause I'm kind of caring and compassionate. And my issue is I'm really friendly and outgoing. I smile at everyone. I say hello to everyone. And when he saw inside my purse, which was opened up because I had it on my other wrist, um, he saw a $20 bill in there and he literally stuck his hand and grabbed inside my purse. He goes, oh, I'm having surgery. I need a 20. And he grabbed inside my purse. My other arm went down. My purse went down. He goes, oh, I'm having surgery and I need a, I need money. And he grabbed the 20 and jerked it out of my purse really hard. And we're standing there in front of the laundromat. And the way the laundromat is, is um, we're up front. And I had parked where I normally didn't park. And it was during the day, it was daylight hours and everything. I normally park out in the open where, um, right in front of Beaufort High School. Um, so um, he gets the money out and I'm trying to get away. And then he grabs me by the arm. Then at that point, the good arm, or actually, I don't know if he grabbed me by the bad arm, I think. And that's when I'm in a lot of pain. I still have the frozen shoulder. I haven't had surgery or anything yet. Haven't had my bicep repair yet. And he goes, it's okay. We're related. You have brown eyes like me. We're friend, we're we're family. We're family. And then he grabs my head. It's during COVID too at that point in time. And um, he kisses me um, on the forehead. He goes, it's okay. We're family, baby. We're family, you know. And um, and I'm really, I'm getting upset. I'm starting to get, and I said, listen, I'm married. He goes, that's okay. We're family. We're family. I finally get away and I get in my car and I'm just about to lose it. And then you guys, I just must have been all kinds of stupid that day because he finally leaves and he's going up and he comes back out of the car. I just cracked the window. He goes, can you give me a ride out to um, Dollar uh, and no, as a dollar store? I knew what the other dollar store was, the orange one. And I knew that was out on St. Helena. And I just said, no, my husband is waiting for me. And I roll the window back up and I get in and I finally leave. And this is a short abridged version of it. And I go get back home as quick as I can. And I call Ron and I said, please come home right now. I said, just get your ass home now. I lose it when I get home. I ended up not driving again. And that was the first time I drove after not driving for eight months. And, and it finally, and when I started sharing it with a few friends, they said, Chris, you were assaulted. Basically that's assault, you know, and, you know, nothing happened you know, that was too bad, you know, because there's other people that have been us really assaulted. OK, so we don't want to take away from what's happened to other people who have been hurt very, very badly. But it, it was just more than I could handle. And um, and it took me a long time to just kind of deal with the fact that I am happy with a man who will go up to the edge and put his toes over that line to keep those people away. I'm very happy with a man to protect me. And 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 I call it being chivalrous and being, you know, or, or crossing that, putting his toes over the edge for me because I just, you know, this was too much for me that day. And I was, guys, keep in mind, I'm 60 years old now. So I was about 55 when that happened. It was, well, it was COVID, right during COVID. So that was only, what, three, actually it was, I guess, three years ago that this happened. And I haven't talked about this in a while, but when I saw that reel that Mike sent, um, you know, Mamie just kind of, oh, I forgot about that happening. And I'm glad that I was able to forget about it. Well, lo and behold, next time I go to the laundromat, I get my nerve up. I go again, but Ron drops me off. He doesn't leave me alone there during the day again. So I'm sitting there and there's a couple people in the laundromat that day. I wasn't alone. A guy comes in and I just, and I try to, you know, I smile. I'm not smiling at anybody anymore. I can tell you that. I'm not a friendly person anymore. I'm just mean. I'm not being happy with you anymore. Guy comes in, he looks at me and he goes like that. He walks to the back. I'm like, what is that? 
what is that? And then he walks up and he sits down and he like, you know, where somebody sits next to you and kind of like smashes on your thigh. They're so close to you. You ever done that? Like smash right next to you, you know? And this guy sits next to me. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm waiting on my husband. What are you? And he, he did not even care that I was waiting on my spouse or anything. This guy didn't care. Was getting up on face. He goes, you know, um, people don't like America. You know, there's, and then he went down the American thing that, um, you know, I said something about being a Marine and some other stuff. And the thing was that I've learned, and now I just don't go to the laundromat at all. Ron does all of it now. So I just sit at home and I kept sitting at home, staying away from people, not going out anywhere, not doing anything, not going anywhere without my husband, which is another reason why I have my concealed carry, which is why I'm packing everywhere I go in Beaufort because <laughs> this town is an enema, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it just it got it does. I got that from my old Batman movie, you know, Jack Nicholson. But it's just the fact that I'm I'm very I'm just gonna repeat it again for the fourth time now. I'm very glad and happy to have a man who will go up to that edge and put his toes over the line of you know bordering on aggression to defend me and take care of me because this country needs that because there are some crazies out there and you guys may disagree. I hope not, but <laughs> I'm glad that you'll stick up for your spouse and not just your, not just a woman, but for anybody who deserves it or needs it or, you know, or cares more. So just, and it was just, it was just too much that day. And then Ron and I was like texting. I'm like, where are you? Come back now. He'd gone to Publix and gone to the dump and gone to Walmart and was coming back. And it's a little circle right out here on ladies Island. But I was like, come back now, come back now. And there was a guy in there that I had known from, um, I can't remember his name. I'd known him from Goodwill. He was an alcoholic um, and he was the safe one, you know, that he had, he rode his bike around Ladies Island, you know, and, and I kept waiting for him to come back. And I'm like, I'm waiting on an alcoholic guy who's a local here to come back and save me. And this is sad, you know, but, um, and then there was another guy that was in there eating his fish from the local store next door. And he was kind of watching what was going on with the second guy. This was the second guy, you know. But I was thinking, you're just going to have to, Krista, you're going to need a man up here, girl. You're going to have to grow up hair. Um, and, 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 and Ron asked me, you know, what happened to that bitch I married? You know, what happened to that girl, you know, that you used to be? But, and I have gotten stronger about it. I'm not afraid now, I think, as much. But just keep in mind... I'm not saying that I'm defending my actions or lack of actions that in the first one, but I was really broken physically and emotionally after that first event, you know, cause I hadn't driven a car for eight months and, um, and I had some issues, you know, and, and, and I couldn't defend myself physically. So, um, I, I'm, I'm thankful for strong, strong men who are willing to take care of business. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the story. Uh, and Absolutely. I, I can't even believe something like that even still happens. Uh, that's what amazes me. Uh, in today's world, you would think that uh, those things wouldn't happen. But unfortunately, we have those a-holes out there uh, walking around doing stupid things. And you're right. We need somebody to, you know, toe the line, if you will, and uh, and make sure, you know, uh, kind of be that, that aggressor uh, against the bad. So, yeah. Vic, you got anything? Yeah, I do. Um, it's it seems like um, there's there's a much bigger thing at play here, uh, and and I I I think uh, I know Jordan Peterson's talked about it, and Ben Shapiro and a couple others uh, that because uh, Jordan Peterson is on uh, Daily Wire also, uh, but they talk about the demasculization of men in America. Uh, and, and that, that is why, uh, I, I think it, it is a purposeful thing. Um, uh, I think we're in a society now where, uh, people are celebrating the demasculization, uh, of men. Um, and, uh, it's, it, it's creating such a, um, there, there are second and third order effects. Uh, from demasculating uh, of the men. Um, you have people that keep spouting off toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, all that kind of stuff. Um, those are people that want to demasculate men um, because they are intimidated by there or at some point, maybe they were intimidated by some man. Uh, but uh, we're get we're getting more and more and more psychopaths out there 
more and more school shootings, more and more mass shootings. I mean, that stuff is on the rise. We all know it is. It's not anecdotal. Um, and uh, at the same time, we have a, a culture, I dare say, maybe even some, uh, you know, uh, some behind the scene efforts uh, to demasculate people or to demasculate the, the men in society. So um, it was funny that you mentioned that the sheepdog among sheep, because uh, when I when I took my concealed carry class, uh, that's what our my instructor talked about. He's like, you're, you're not out there to go looking for trouble. You're out there being the sheepdog among sheep. Uh, that's the point of being, uh, you know, a concealed carry person. Uh, but uh, it's uh, and the, the people, the people that uh, are uh, espousing, uh, you know, the anti uh, carry uh, rhetoric out there. That's that's the other thing. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally trying to strip people of not only take care of themselves, but the ability to take care of themselves. Uh, and it's it's sad. It's sad, especially as a father right now watching my daughter you know who's 17 years old she's gonna be 18 in six months uh a legal adult you know all that kind of stuff man oh man i mean I, every day is like almost like a safety brief like what about this what about that Are you thinking about this how about that you know um and like every every boy that she's met bring to the house i look him up and down i shake his hand and you know and i'm like what are your intentions with my daughter you know <laughs> uh I look him straight in the eye you, what time are you going to be home okay then you're going to be home at that time kind of thing you know so it's a uh i, I and she i hopefully when she's older she will look at that and appreciate and see the example that i'm trying to set uh i've told my daughter and my wife over and over uh well my wife still uh, that i'm your knight in shining armor uh, and I told my daughter that I'm your knight in shining armor until you get married and then maybe even still for a little bit, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm your knight in shining armor. Uh, so you need, you need anything. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you put yourself in that situation. You need me, you call me and I'll be there. Uh, cause I'm your knight in shining armor. And I think less and less men are doing that these days. Uh, we have more and more men wanting to be women. We have more and more men that are, you know, what was it back in the nineties? Metrosexual, I uh, think is what they called it. You remember that? <laughs> uh, and that's demasculating, you know, that's, that's what they were, you know? Um, but it's, that just seems to be more and more and more prevalent these days. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's frustrating, especially as a father of a, of a, of a young lady. So. Yeah. Good points. Yeah. Aaron. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Great points. Uh, Krista, thanks again for, for sharing that. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, it traumatizes you. So you're not, you know, willing to come forth and, and share a lot of those uh, details and stuff like that. Um, but just quickly. So I was deployed to Iraq in 2009 and uh, my wife was at a Walmart in J Vegas. Uh, and we all know how those are not the old Walmart, but the, the newest super center. And uh, she was walking through the store and had her purse right there in the middle, uh, uh, the, the buggy right there, uh, you know, where the child seat is. And she turned to, to look at something, maybe pick it up. Or... My wife's got this weird thing where she has to touch everything. <laughs> she went to pick it up and look at it, and she felt something brush by her arm to turn to look and watch the dude running away with her purse. Um, so much like... Like, much like Krista, my wife is a strong, uh, I'll put it this way, independent, but not, you know, obviously y'all, you're independent in meaning you don't have to be weighted on hand and foot by a man. But obviously you enjoy, you know, your husband's company and and, and like the, the uh, security that he brings to the house and so forth. But anyway, she ran him down and she said, I blacked out at that point, but some dude ended up coming over and helping her out. And, holding the dude down and, and until they got him escorted out of there. But, uh, oh, you know, wow. yeah, my <laughs> chased him down and tackled him. She didn't get hurt or nothing. No, she, wow. she probably hurt him, but <laughs> yeah. Well, he deserved it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Wow. But to Vic's point about demasculating, uh, Daniel Penny, look what happened to him in the New York subway, you know, a psychopath is threatening people and, and no, you know, attacking people and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So he goes to restrain him and puts him in a chokehold and the guy ends up dying, but you know, look what they're doing to him. Now people were just, you know, to your point, Vic is 
oh, I'm not going to do anything because I'm going to end up getting arrested and charged with murder if something goes south. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of saying, you know what, this this guy was minding his own business, seeing somebody being violent towards other people and, and attacking other people and said, hey, knock it off, ended up getting into a scuffling and, and you know, put a chokehold on a guy to restrain him. You know, I mean, we, we already defunded the police, so we don't have the, the police there ready available to, to go take care of the situation. So, you know, it's crazy. And everyone asked me why I didn't call the police. And I'm like, I didn't know that I needed to call the police. I didn't know I should call the police. I didn't think I was supposed to call the police. It was just 20 bucks. But then I got to thinking how bad he hurt me, physically hurt me. And then, of course, the mental hurt. The mental hurt lasted another four months, you know. And and like I said, I wasn't anything that was lasting. He didn't sexually assault me or anything like that. So, but then I couldn't drive. I went home and I didn't drive again for a long time. I didn't go to the laundromat. And now I won't go to a laundromat. I won't go anywhere without my husband. I won't do anything without my husband. I, I feel like I need to be protected by my husband or a weapon. So he did, in essence, hurt me in some aspects, you know, or not just him personally, but the event hurt me. So that's what stays with you. So, but I never called the police. And and because I didn't think I was, I'm like, I'm supposed to call the police. And then people like, Chrissy, you were assaulted. You were assaulted. And it was a different type of assault. So, and that's what, so now it has stayed with me because I'm an older woman. And so, yeah. So it, in, in essence, it did do something to me, but yeah. So now, well, and I, and, and, it stays with younger, younger people as well. It's not just, uh, you know, older women, like you're saying, because uh, those types of things that happen. And I know Marines that that's happened to, uh, and not specifically that, but things like that. And it sticks with them. And, you know, that's very traumatizing. Yeah, I have an yeah, old, I have I have a, a girlfriend now. Sorry, I got a, but I got a girlfriend now. And I'm like, if I need to go to the laundromat, you're going with me. She goes, I'll go with you. We'll, just, we'll hurt everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I had a Marine that was assaulted before they came in the Marine Corps. And uh, years, years before they came in the Marine Corps. And then, like, then like all of it came out trials started happening and court dates started happening and this marine was, went back and um uh, one of the lead witnesses committed suicide uh before the everything came to uh fruition and like it, i mean it was first of all they went through it the first time and then the second time after all the court hearings and everything started happening and then all of the stuff started coming back up years and years later. Uh, so it all, basically it was almost like it was all happening again. And then so the then the then the lead witness commits suicide. So the the, the, the truth is not coming out, you know, uh, and it, it just the the, the 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 if I'm not mistaken, the, the court uh, case actually got dropped because there was no there wasn't enough evidence because it happened so many years in the past. Uh, and because the lead witness committed suicide, there wasn't enough evidence to convict. So it all just got dropped. Wow. Uh, so the, the Marine two times in a row had to go through that with no resolution both times. You know, so it was just I felt so bad for them. I felt so bad for them. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was it was. It was awful. Uh, lots of conversations, you know, kneecap to kneecaps with that Marine trying to talk them down and put them in my office uh, because what they came back from the court date and not in a good way. And like, you're going to sit in my office for a while because I don't trust you alone kind of thing. Uh, so it's uh yeah, it was, it was bad. And I still feel bad for that Marine. It's, it's horrible. Luckily they've moved on and it appears that their, their, their life is like way on an upswing right now. So uh, I'm proud of where that Marine is at right now, but man, it's that stuff stays with you. It scars you, it scars you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you're uh, speaking of like uh, men being uh, the knight in shining armor, like you were talking about uh, before Vic. Um, when I was uh, here at the schoolhouse, uh, there's a female walking in front of me and I was like, Oh man, I better get the door. So I kind of trotted out and I was like, here, let me get that for you. And uh, this girl turns around and if we're both in civilian attire uh, and she's like, I I can open the door for myself and blah, 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 blah. And she started going on and on and on about it. And I'm like, 
look, I, I'm just trying to be nice. You know, that's what a man is supposed to do is open the door for a lady, whatever. And I was like, but if you don't want me to open the door for you, whatever, you're on your own, have fun, and, you know, type of deal. But man, she was, I mean, heated uh, because I opened the door or tried to open the door for her. Uh, yeah. And, and that's just, I don't know. It seems backwards to me. Yeah. It's it, it, and every part of society that, that is starting to happen. You know, people, people that are trying to do the right thing where morals and ethics would say that this is the right thing to do yet they are being held legally responsible sometimes for trying to do the right thing, which is just maddening to me. Like if you're a squatter in New York, you have more rights than the owner. It's, it's like, I think I mentioned maybe on the last podcast, you know, a uh, owner went and tried to change their locks back and the owner got arrested. Arrested. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, this just defies logic. Somebody's stealing something from you and that, that, that thief has more rights than the owner. California, you can walk right into a, you know, Walgreens or a CVS and as long as it's less than $900, you can walk out whatever you want. Yeah. That just defies logic to me. And it's all, it's just, it's, it's a slow erosion of morals and ethics. That's all it is. It, it's a, it's, it's like the, the uh, death by a thousand cuts, you know, it's like slowly eroding away uh, what what American society is through all this rules and legislation and all this uh, the, now we got like uh, like e everything that's going on it's 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 all interrelated and people don't even see it you know it's like okay transgenderism is a big thing or whatever it's it's a hot topic right now but that's only one facet of demasculating uh, American men and then you got China over there is saying okay kids can only spend one this is law. <laughs> Kids can only spend one hour a day on video games because video games are demasculating their 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 children. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's like China is saying, no, no, no. You, you, our men are going to be men, but for other reasons. But uh, it's, uh, I mean, their 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 workforce is aging, and they need men now. Uh, and uh, yeah. their 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 pool of people to pick from is not masculine. Uh, so it's, uh, it, yeah, China's doing it for different reasons, but it's still happening. And China's like trying to turn their men into men and we're trying to turn our men into women. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy concept. Uh, you know, I, uh, it's a, and that's a hot topic. Like you said, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. Uh, we're dealing with it. You know, I, I'm dealing with it on a regular basis. So you know, I, I know everybody else is having to deal with it at some point in time. Uh, and it makes makes life interesting for sure. Uh, you know, and it's hard to talk to people that are going through that because you don't know. Like for me, I don't know what to say, you know, because if, if I say the wrong thing, especially while I was active duty, if I say the wrong thing, holy cow, man, stand by because, man, I'm going to get raked over the coals. Uh, you know, so it was very touch and go whenever I was dealing with it on active duty. Well, but, uh, part of it is uh, it vacate on it a little bit. Uh, you know, judges, judges, when when these cases go to trial, judges are making decisions based off their personal beliefs and thoughts instead of the letter of the law. Uh, I mean, we just seen it in the Trump case, right? <laughs> He's going to yeah. go ahead and just. I mean, the the decision was made before the trial even began. And, and that's that's on a larger scale that we all uh, could see on television. Uh, think about all the other little cases across America that a lot of these liberal judges are, are making decisions on that are that are, uh, you know, affecting everyday citizens. You know, not not billionaires like Donald Trump that can afford to pay one hundred and seventy something million or whatever uh, while he why he. Uh, <laughs> submits for a uh uh whatever legal term is here but yeah yeah that's uh i can't even imagine uh sometimes that you look at individuals you know at, at let's say our level right uh all of a sudden judges start coming out they're starting to make all these crazy decisions or whatever 
what it affect, how it affects us is completely different. Cause I don't have the money to go out and just get a lawyer and do all that type of stuff, you know? Uh, so for us, we just got to eat it. I'm like, well, okay, well it is what it is. And then try to push on, you know? Uh, and I, I, I don't know. How do we fight that? You know what I'm saying? Get people elected. That's the only thing I can think of, you know, but, uh, I don't know. Well, what which, else you got? Which is proving, Go ahead. which is proving to be harder than uh, than what we realize sometimes. You know, I mean, it takes it takes a write in, you know, and however many Vic said <laughs> that it that you know people wrote him in to 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 turn the tide. You know, yeah. If, if nobody would have wrote him in, it would have been against two other people who probably had no business being in there in the first in the first place, and that's on the local level. So. Yeah, very true. And then how many times, uh, and, and Vic could probably speak to this, but how many times have you been, uh, um, I guess, talked down to or or whatever because of your political belief uh, and everyone trying to get you to uh, back down on things? And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's happened a couple of times. Uh, almost every board meeting. Uh, when when we were in the hot topic of the, the school, the library books, um, the by policy, board members are not allowed to respond. Uh, so during the public comments portion of the meeting, of which we had two, um, if anybody came up to speak, they could call out a board member by name. You did this. You did this. How come you did that? How come you did that? And board members are not allowed to say anything. You just have to sit there and smile. Mm. Yep. <laughs> the only thing we're allowed to say is thank you for your comments. <laughs> That's it. That's wow. it. And it's uh, so like at what forum? I mean, first of all, uh, only a fool argues with a fool. Right. Uh, so it's like, mm. so uh, do you say anything back at all? You know, do I go to my 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 district uh, Facebook page and say, well, this person said that and this, that, this, and that. Or, uh, I mean, because all you're doing is you're just feeding the trolls, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but uh, it's you, but man, so tempting because you want to defend yourself. You want to say, no, your facts are wrong. This is why there. This is what I did. Why I did this. This is no. You're completely wrong about me. You want to be able to say those things, but the fool of, of only a fool argues with a fool. <laughs> you know, it's it's frustrating sometimes. Very very frustrating. Yeah, and then you you get into uh, the pol uh, politics where you know, uh, like you were saying, you're not allowed to say things. You know, at certain times or whatever, and that just doesn't like. That's crazy. Uh, I, you know, you look at even in Congress when they're talking and they're going back and forth and stuff like that. Uh, they'll just shut somebody down for, you know, even hinting that somebody on the other side is, you know, doing something wrong or whatever. They just shut them down. You can't talk about them like that. And then yeah, all your stuff is null and void. Get out type of deal. And which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, it's also disappointing to me. Like uh, it's, it's not just about, okay, you're wrong, or this is why I'm right, you know, kind of thing. Like, the 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 liberal voice, they have, because feelings are more than important than facts right now, right? Um, the liberal voice has to try to incite the most hateful, violent, like, speech that they can think of. So, like, I mean, they, they compare people to Hitler. They, they're comparing this, you know, to like, you know, the, the Civil War, you know, it's like, no, thousands and thousands and thousands of people died in the Civil War. You know, Hitler, you know, like, tried to, like, erase an entire, like, you know, people. Like, how can you, how can you, you don't even know your history. You just, first of all, you're just spouting off things that you've heard from someone, someone else. Second of all, like, it just, it just, it's frustrating that people have to, you can't talk logically with somebody they have to that person that's arguing against somebody like me has to incite the the most hateful most violent rhetoric they can think of you know in comparison and like oh my gosh my friend's gonna die if we don't get to read these books really <laughs> really i'm not kidding that, you, was, that was that was used <laughs> what's 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 funny about that is is you know they they like you said, they compare people to Hitler. Funny thing is, is that Hitler would have had them murdered already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For not yeah. following exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah. That's what they don't realize. <laughs> nope. Crazy. Gotta love the the world we live in. Uh, Just you know, 
Yeah, just pick an evil person and compare him to that. That's yeah, it's crazy. And and like like Vic said, it's happening right in our Congress. All you got to do is tune on whatever it is, C-SPAN, and watch some of these debates. And it's like one side will throw facts out, another side will say, I'll say another side. We'll call libertarians. They'll say, yep, yep, that makes sense. And then the other side is completely like, well, the only reason this person's bringing it up is, like Vic said, because because they support Hitler. They want to be like Hitler. They want to be a dictator. And it's like that had nothing to do with anything. But yep. can continue you're to You're a fascist. It. You're a Marxist. You're a bigot. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. He's got all the terms down. That was pretty good. Oh, I forgot. Uh, well, because he's probably right. heard him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's been called all oh, of yeah. them. <laughs> you know the the watching c-span and all those the uh the hearings and stuff like that in congress uh it amazes me how many of the congressmen uh and women they don't even sit there they're they're not even in there when they're debating if you will they're, there's nobody there and then they come in they walk in like you know two two people before they're supposed to go and then they you know they say their thing but nobody's listening that nobody even cares. And then they go in and they vote on these stupid bills and all these other things. And they just throw all kinds of extra crap in. And that drives me insane. I just vote on one thing, you know, I don't, well, they just, they just passed another one. 95. I billion. know. I saw it and yesterday. No telling, no telling what's in that thing. You know, it, it, tens of thousands of pages within a bill. Nobody has time to read that. I don't care who you are. You can, you know, you can be, you know, what, what's the old guy, uh, did the commercials spoke really fast back in when we were all younger. I can't even remember now, but. Oh, the, he, the, he guy spoke, did the micro machine commercials. Yeah. Yeah. He spoke <laughs> like <laughs> extremely <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> None of them can read that fast or even speak that fast, but. Oh yeah. Sure enough though. You know, well, you have to hundreds of them put in it. There's, there's, you know, how, how many representatives? I'm showing, I'm showing my stupidity here or my ignorance. Like, 500 like 400 and something, right? 400, 400, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, each one of them gets to put their own little piece in there. Like, I want this because probably because they're going to get kickbacks from it uh, or something to that nature. And well, sure it's, enough, it's all to buy votes. Well, right, if right. you vote for this, yeah. then, you know, I'll vote, I'll vote yes on this bill if you give me $20,000 to to repair the park in my city. Yep. You know, yep. yeah, that's, and, or, you station. know, that kind of shit, you know, and that, and that is infuriating, infuriating. Uh, Pelosi was the worst at it. You know, that was actually her example. Like she was like, she tried to get like $800,000 or something like that to fix her park in San Francisco. Like, come on. Yeah. So what does that have to do with defense spending? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, what's man. Guys, yeah. What's y'all's guys take on Taiwan? Uh in what capacity? What do you mean? Please in, a, in, in assisting Taiwan financially. Um I don't know. I I I'm American first. First, you know, like if we're gonna yeah. if, if we're gonna assist anybody, anybody, what do we get out of it? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's the, the, I'm, I'm sick and tired. I mean, the, the fact that our government just hands out all of our money to people that don't deserve it in our country, gotcha. And then they do, they do even more to people out of our country, gotcha. I, 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 I vaguely am aware of why we're spending so much money in Ukraine, but still, I'm, I. I no, I'm done. How many billions and billions? Like we've given them what, like sixty-one billion dollars so far, or something like that. I mean, billions and billions and billions of dollars we've given to them. What? How, there is. I'd rather so spend much that money that, to get rid of Putin than than help Ukraine. I'd rather oh, spend money to get rid of Putin than well, help Ukraine. It, how can that money be used yeah, internally? Right. You know? oh, yeah. Well, like the interstate, that, but... it's like the interstate road system that was you know the uh, roosevelt thing right you know, yeah what happened to that infrastructure <laughs> yes yes 
Why don't we invest that in our infrastructure? Like the whole interstate problem, it would like take like twelve man. billion dollars to fix our interstates. You know, and bridges. something like that. You know, I, that's anecdotal. I, I don't know for sure. I don't have the exact numbers, but it's it's like we've been able we would have been able to fix all of interstates for for a third of the money that we've given Ukraine and yeah, our bridges. And I don't know, maybe institute some safety programs so barges don't run into bridges. Yeah, that's what I said. And bridges. <laughs> <laughs> that's all crazy talk you can't you can't talk about that uh, uh, you yeah. know. but but instead we're letting people that uh you know that want to do damage to america flood in our southern border you know and now we're saying that they're allowed to have government jobs if they're going to california they can have government jobs in california by the way and what? they're being bust oh yeah they're being bust all over the united states all over the united states and uh, you, I guarantee they're going to find a way to vote. Illegal aliens are going to be voting in our in our next election. Guarantee it. Well, that's unfortunate. So it's springtime in Beaufort. <laughs> nice transition there. That's it's good. springtime. Crash segue. <laughs> yeah. I got a pair of crash symbols right here. I can. <laughs> you got a what? I said I got a pair of crash symbols right here. <laughs> we're crashing y'all remember the gong show did y'all ever watch the gong show oh yeah <laughs> oh, man what a hilarious show what's a good show <laughs> uh, hey, that so was, hey, i just thought about it. that was like the that was like the beginning of like american idol right or the voice the gong show right uh, yeah kind of who's got talent yeah yeah there's some some early reality Shows or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, uh, talent. Who's got talent? Talent shows. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I can remember my school putting on like a talent show, but and they had the gong there. They would. They would hit oh, the really? Gong if somebody was bad, yeah. I wow. That. And I couldn't have been fourth or fifth grade, something like that. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, well. My middle school back then was, I think, fourth through sixth grade, something, something like that. It was still considered elementary, but it was like you weren't like, you know, K through you th third. You went, yeah, up, yeah you, you actually went to a different, yeah, you actually went to a different building too. You didn't have to stay in the building with K through three. So. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, it's right. funny when we were talking about lost arts. Um, I asked Ron, what's a lost art? And he did say chivalry. Vic, he did. He said chivalry was a lost art. So, really? But I was I mean, thinking more about like, um, can we talked about canning last night and quilting. Yeah. So, I think canning is definitely is lost arts. The, Does uh, anybody in y'all's world can? Uh, no. Uh, we don't do it. That's for sure. But I know, I mean, people back home do. Uh, uh, but I don't. I probably do. I couldn't do it. I'd have to look it all up on how. But uh, I think that is a, definitely a lost art because, I mean, if you can can your own food, you don't have to rely on somebody else. That's a good deal. Yeah. Uh, when I uh, when I was a younger kid uh, living in Florida, uh, we're talking like elementary school. Uh, my best friend's mom can, and like they had, like, I mean, their pantry was about the size of you know the the average walk-in closet. You know, um, like ten by ten kind of thing, and every shelf in there was completely lined with with can or with you know the little glass jars of everything. She she did everything. She pickled beans, beets, you know, all that kind of stuff. She had all kinds of jams and jellies in there, and uh, she like even like pickled eggs and stuff like that. I mean, it was uh, all kinds of stuff. She she did it all. She did it all. I mean, it was they they kind of needed to. It was a, a one income family, and they had seven kids. Uh, yeah. So like the kids thought it was a treat to eat bread. That's, I mean, that's how, that's how yeah. Like I'd go spend the night with my, with my friend, uh, my, my best friend uh, at the time. And, uh, like mom would like be out in the garden somewhere and dad would be at work and he'd be like, you want to eat some bread? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, I'm good, man. He's like, all right. Look out for my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Seriously, it's Wonder Bread, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> but oh, that's just like that how that's how tight it was for them, you know. So like they had to can everything. Uh, so I mean, but yeah, I I often wondered, you know, I I 
I am not a green thumb at all, but I have wanted to, to like start growing a garden, which I don't have a backyard for it. Like my most, most of my entire backyard is shade. Uh, so I don't know that I would be able to grow a garden in the backyard. Uh, but uh, just, I mean, and just start canning some things, you know, just start canning peppers or, you know, whatever, making my own pickles or something, you know. That's, I could live off that if I could make my own pickles. You know, I love pickles. So I like the Claussen. Those are my favorite. Uh, they got the crunch, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was young, uh, we would do, um, uh, I would take carrots or uh, other vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, whatever. That would be in my lunch. So for the snack, you know, most kids, they, you know, they have, uh, you know, pop tart or, you know, I don't know, whatever they had back then. And, uh, you know, I'd have my carrot and I'd be eating my carrot and everybody's doing the trades, right? Oh, let me trade for this, trade for that. I'm like, anybody want to trade for a carrot? And they're like, no, no, not at all. <laughs> oh, so I had to sit there and eat my carrots. Uh, but I, I liked them, the carrots, you know, still, e even today, one of my favorite snacks is those cherry tomatoes. Uh, I put them in a cup and then pour uh, pickle juice on it and let it sit for a while. And then I'll eat the tomatoes. It's really good. Hmm. Yeah. You got to do Pezdek. Huh? Adam Pezdek. You got, you know, Adam Pezdek. Yeah. Back when he and I were uh, at Third Mall, uh, he was mm -hmm. the, the SEL, and I, SEL and I was the EC. He had yeah. two cherry tomato bushes on either side of his front door. So every morning that he came to work, he would pull off, you know, in season, you know, he'd bring two bowls of cherry tomatoes two different kinds it was like prince something or other uh and then like round cher cherry tomato or something like but like oh my gosh those things right off the bush so sweet so good man they were man tasty i'm kind of missing them now <laughs> yeah man i'm trying to figure out how to turn a light on here <clears throat> good to start to your car, car and turn on the overhead <laughs> yeah i was gonna i was gonna say some of the some of the best tomatoes uh it's straight right out of the garden Cut that sucker oh, yeah. open, put a little bit of salt on it, and eat it. Now, do you guys ever go to like the U pick gardens or farms and get like corn or tomatoes or anything like that, or like blueberries or things like that? You can do that. I haven't done that since I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. picked our own strawberries, blueberries, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Because yeah. you can do that. You know, like it, when tomatoes are in season, this is a way to, uh, if you want to can, or you can, do y'all know what blanching is? Okay, blanching, like when you do the fresh, that's how, like when I would go to Alabama in the summer, go to Jasper and go to my grandmother's, um, like her neighbor would bring her like two huge bushels of corn, picked corn, corn on the cob. And what we do is this is, and she had two upright freezers, you know, in her little laundry room area, but we take the corn and she'd blanch some and then like freeze them in the freezer packs and we'd blanch them for two minutes, boil in the boil in water and then she'd freeze them. And then some of it she would blanch. And then this is, you know, you make cream corn, cut them off and make the cream corn and then freeze them in the freezer packs too. Um, so like when certain vegetables or fruits are in season, you can go and do that. And then you can make, now, now I don't like to make jelly because jelly's hard to make. The way you make jelly is it's like making jam, but then you have to strain it to get the liquid. It's just better to make jam. Because oh, you yeah. use the whole fruit and you just smash it up. Because making jelly is really hard. I tried to make jelly once. Yeah, jam is 10 times better. Aaron, I don't know if you heard that. Don't, don't try to make jelly because you have to strain it. Jelly's hard. Just make jam. But but so that's yeah, something I, I you can it. do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, because I apologize. I'm set, I, I go off camera and then stuff my face with some more food. Especially since we're talking about it. I just get oh, a little hungry. You know, and Victor got scalded <laughs> for eating and smoking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, but that's something you can think about doing with your kids if you want to try to can or or blanch and blanch and freeze. And you could even freeze and then in the like winter time, you could take that fruit out of the freezer or whatever and then can it. So I didn't know. I'm just trying to make some suggestions. They're like, no, you're not. You're mothering. <laughs> take no. Those are good suggestions. Uh, I just got, got to look it up, figure out how to do it because I have no clue. There's it's on the packet of the sure gel if you want to do that. Now canning vegetables is a little bit different. Um I'm not I'm not an expert at canning tomatoes or corn um or pickles. So I, I might need to get advice and help with that. I'm a, I'm better. I can can any kind of fruit. Make fruit and then also jam. So 
just because they up here they have the the up in on the way to Charleston. There's a place called Champney Blueberry Farms, and they have blueberries. And I'm a blueberry lover. I would rather have a blueberry pie for my birthday in October than a than a cake any day. Give me a blueberry pie for my birthday. Yeah. I don't want a cake. I want blueberry pie. Too runny. Blueberry pie is good. I love blueberry. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right, Aaron, you gotta you gotta give us the topic here before we have to call it quits. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got you. Okay. Cool. All right. I was just I'm wondering because uh, Aaron just looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> I'm looking at all of y'all like you're crazy, but I get the same look. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you want to talk about, Aaron? Let's uh. Let's see. A long start. I mean, we pretty much been talking about it. All-Star game. Is there an All-Star game this and, summer? Oh yeah, there'll be an All-Star game. I don't know where it's at. I I love baseball, but I don't I don't pay attention to the details. Um huh. you know, maybe if maybe if I got paid to do all that stuff, you know, maybe either commentate or write a write a section for the paper or something like that, I'd probably pay more attention to details. I just enjoy watching it, you know. Uh you know what else is this summer, time. right? The the Olympics. Yeah. It's an Olympic year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to that. Is it summer so, or so winter Olympics? A, it's summer. I think it's summer Olympics this year. Summer, yeah. And then yeah. two years later will be the winter. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of one thing. I, w- I don't know if I'd call it a lost start, but that seems like that's one thing that's different. Uh, when was Atlanta? 96? Mm-hmm. Was it Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I, I've noticed as I would say probably about 2012, I remember, you know, Americans used to get really ramped up for the Olympics and, uh-huh. and you know, and support the American teams. But because of the way our society is going now, it's almost like you, you can't really. Well, part of it is because you got, you know, you got folks representing America at the Olympics kneeling for the national anthem. Like, Really? Yes. Yeah. And they also have like our demasculated uh, like portion of the of the culture is offended because we have all these super athletes that are competing on their behalf. You know, it's yeah. like it's almost like they're offended. It's like, ugh. you guys are triggering me today. I tell you. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's your old age. We're going to blame it on that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. Man, who knew when I turned 67, I'd get this angry. (laughs) (laughs) That's good stuff. Oh, man. All right. Well, hey, um, I guess we can uh, draw it down here, uh, call it quits, uh, unless you guys have anything else. Uh, But uh, last quilting shot. What? I said quilting. (laughs) Another lost card. Quilting. I can't do that either. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing. When I was a, a bartender, I saved all my uh, all my Crown Royal bags cuz I did all the the liquor inventory every week. So for like 3 years I saved all the Crown Royal bags. I had like 90 Crown Royal bags. Uh carted them around for like 10 years, 15 years, something like that. Uh and I kept telling my wife, I was like, uh, I need to find somebody to make a quilt out of these. So we sent them all to my uh to her aunt. And her aunt knew a bunch of quilters and they turned all my crown royal bags into a quilt. And then like she actually, the the woman who did it actually won like this national prize because she submitted the pattern to like some quilting organization and won first place. So I was like, Ooh, that's wow. cool. So yeah, I still have the quilt. That that was probably 10 years ago. And I still have I'm, the quilt's in a quilt case in her living room. <laughs> that's cool. I like it. So save your crown royal bag so you can get a uh, a crown royal uh, blanket. I was inspired by a bunch of hippies at a fish concert. Yes, <laughs> that, that makes sense. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what? All right, <laughs> Krista, Aaron, parting shots. You got anything? 
Krista says no. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have anything really motivating this week, you know. Oh. So how Just, am I supposed uh, to make it through the week? Stay, stay hydrated. Ooh, stay hydrated. All right, That's I like it. it. Okay. With, you know, uh, with a beverage of your choice. There we go. Ooh. Change it up a little very bit. Very generous of you. Very generous. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for that one. <laughs> All right, Krista, anything? Take a nap. <laughs> Take a nap. Ooh, I like that one. Awesome. All right, so the beverage of your choice, uh, take a nap and save your Crown Royal bags. Uh, to all the listeners out there, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Uh, to anybody that's struggling, you're needing help or anything, you can always dial 988, press option 1. You can also text 939-288, and that will be able to get you in contact with somebody to help you. Or you can go to veteranscrisisline.net, click on the chat icon, and somebody will be there to help you. But one veteran's life lost is one veteran's life lost is one too many. Uh, I care about you. I know the podcast crew cares about you, and we want you to uh, continue living and doing what you do. So with that, uh, to all my crew, thanks for joining me this, this week, and to everybody else out there, stay motivated, change your socks.